Hey there, it's Tammy. It's all about the dogs. Noelle with Positive Directions Canine Academy. And before we get started, if you think about it, like this video and subscribe to our channels. Please. <laughs> Just in case you don't make it. Yeah. Oh, it's this symbol, guys. This symbol. Yeah. Yes, please. <laughs> awesome. So today, what are we talking about? How to get your dog to quit pulling. Yeah, I've seen a lot of posts about that lately. People must be getting out and taking their dogs for more walks. How do I get my dog to quit pulling on the leash? Yeah, you know, I saw a dog today. I was at a park doing a private lesson, and this poor lady was being drugged from one end of the park to the other. <laughs> I can relate. That's happened to me before, too, right? Yeah, yeah. The first thing that um, you need to do is stop walking. There you go. If the dog's pulling, stop walking. Because if you take one or two steps with the dog pulling, then the dog thinks that that's an option. Yeah. And um, <laughs> they're gonna do what their little dog brain wants them to do. They're, they're kind of like um, our little lizard brain. They just <laughs> wanna go smell it, sniff it, pee on it, yeah. you know, taste it or have sex with it. So there you go. <laughs> exactly. So um, stop walking and wait for your dog to um, sit beside you with a loose leash. Once you've got your dog on a loose leash, then you can start taking steps forward. Changing direction often is a great way to keep your dog with you, especially doing left turns. If you've got a dog who has a tendency to want to be out in front of you, doing left turns is a great way to keep your dog's attention and focus up if on you. If you don't trip. Just yeah, be careful exactly. when you do that. <laughs> exactly. Um, some don'ts that you don't want to do would be pulling back on the leash. Did you know that your dogs have an opposition reflex? That doesn't surprise me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you push into a dog, they lean into you rather than get out of your way kind of thing. Yeah. Well, we talked about that in the last video where we talked about the herding breeds and if uh -huh. you move into them, they, they tend to they go that way. They tend to go that way. Yeah. yeah. So um, if you're pulling on your dog, um, what your dog's going to do is pull back the other direction. It's kind of like you've engaged a tug of war. Push me, pull me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there's nothing fun about playing tug of war when you're trying to go for a walk. There's nothing fun about that at no, all. No, no, nothing fun about that at all. Um, the next thing that you might want to think about is the equipment that you're using. Obviously, the equipment's going to give you the, the best control that there is out there. And we've got a video out there on collars that kind of goes into this. But the higher up on the neck the collar sits, the more control you're going to have over your dog. Right. When you start getting down into the neck, um, you can end up with injuries caused from pulling by putting too much pressure on your dog's trachea. Yeah. So we want to avoid that. And I see a lot of people going with harnesses because their dogs pull so hard that they're worried about them having issues with their trachea. And it makes the pulling worse, a harness does. It actually it? does. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, a harness, it doesn't matter whether it snaps in front or underneath or it pulls in the armpits or whatever it does. It sounds like a bra. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do check it though. We have a, a, a thing about harnesses versus leashes. There's a video that we did about that uh -huh. where you can look at it and see how a harness um, causes them to walk differently. It does. So yeah, it really does. It can be it can be dangerous for them eventually, you know, can help it can cause them issues with their front and shoulders. Yep. And so. it's kind of like telling your dog that um, you want them in four wheel drive, but they're not allowed to use it. So I'm not a real big <laughs> fan of using harnesses to get a dog to stop healing. I've never had much success with that. I've usually had really good success with head collars and um, things like that. See, now when we tried a head collar on her, you were here. <laughs> didn't work out very well. Most but. dogs don't care for a head collar. I, you know, we just <laughs> talked about bras a second ago. And I, I have to say that a head collar has to feel to a dog like my bra feels to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uncomfortable. Um, it's a necessary evil. And I can't wait to get it off. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're going to use a head collar, one of the best things that you can do is put it on them, feed them dinner. Put it on them, go outside and go play a game of fetch or um, so they get used to give them something idea. to chew on yeah. so that they're associating the collar with something that's good. And um, once they started to wear it around the house comfortably, um, always with you supervising them. Never put it on them and just let them run around. Um, then you can attach the leash and kind of follow the dog where you're going. It's kind of like going back baby steps to, to um, leash breaking. Mm -hmm. And then you can start directing the dog. So, and most of the um, head collars actually come with little videos or little brochures on how to get your dog used to it. Right, right. Yep. So, um, the number one rule is stop walking. Number two, 
check your collar, make sure that it fits like it's supposed to. Number three, warm up by doing left turns. That will definitely help you. And I spend a lot of time when, even still, mm -hmm. I mean, she's gotten a lot better, but with Zella, I end up still stopping and turning around and going the other direction. Right. Um, and so, so now she's gotten wise to that, so we'll walk a few steps and she's like. <laughs> <laughs> Are we turning? I'm turning! I'm turning! turning oh, now. too funny. But at least she's checking in with you. She is, yeah. Yeah. She's. <laughs> That's very, very good. Um, the next thing that I wanted to tell you is that it's really important that you manage your expectations. Yes. So I don't want you thinking that you're going to put on this magic collar and you're going to go out and you're going to go for a two mile walk and everything's going to be dreamy. Um, it takes a while for your dog to figure out what it is that you're wanting them to do, especially if you've got a heavy duty puller. It may take you 30 minutes to get out of the driveway if you're using this system. <laughs> Um, I, and it's, I've it's, done that, and all the neighbors are like, what is she what doing? What is she doing? She's just standing in the driveway, Carol. What is she doing? <laughs> just ignore your nosy neighbors. They, you know, whatever. Absolutely. Um, but if there's a consequence for pulling, and the consequence is always we don't get where we want to go, yeah. your dog's going to stop doing it. Okay. So it may mean that the first couple days that you go out to take your walks with your dog, you get your mile and a half in in the driveway. But eventually your dog's going to start to check in with you more and they're going to be better and better and better about it. Yeah. Right. So um, those are our tips on how to get your dog to stop pulling. If you've got any questions, please reach out. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. You can just put your comment below. Yeah. Give us a call if you're in Grand Junction and you want to come schedule Absolutely. a class with Noelle. She can teach you all about it. All about it. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Have a great day. Like our channel and subscribe, please. <laughs> Thanks.